Thank you for the invitation. Uh, what I'll be talking about is a specific type of what we can define as alternative media, street papers. Uh, they take many different forms and shapes. Uh, but one thing that they have in common is that they actually involve uh, homeless and socially excluded people uh, in the distribution, and up to a certain degree in most cases uh, in content production. Um, the, we have street papers uh, from the 19th century, uh, but they started proliferating from 1980s onwards. Uh, street news, uh, which has been uh, established in uh, 1989 in New York, is considered to be the first contemporary uh, street paper. Um, their number is increasing. We see more and more uh, street papers, mostly uh, in Europe. In Europe, there is a bigger tradition, but we see them increasing also in. Uh, so there's a bigger tradition uh, in Europe and Northern America, but we see them also increasing in South America, uh, Asia, and Africa. Um, I'll be talking about two cases, uh, about two uh, main active, uh, currently, street papers uh, in Sweden, uh, situation Stockholm and Faktum. In, in Sweden, the street press uh, has a, a, a presence of 22 years. I see street papers, as I said, a specific type of alternative media uh, because uh, they do focus on issues of homelessness, social exclusion, poverty, and uh, um, often from the perspective of the people that actually uh, experience the, uh, the outcomes of uh, social exclu exclusion, poverty, etc. So the homeless, uh, the poor, the mentally ill, etc. These groups, uh, as I said before, they are uh, engaged in, in selling and distributing uh, the, the street papers, um, which of course offers them income, so means to survive, uh, but also it is uh, up to a certain degree and sometimes up to a large degree about reconnecting with society. Um, but uh, also these people, these groups, often participate uh, in the production of the papers. Uh, so they do uh, actively contribute uh, writing. Um, I will give you some basic information about the first case situation in Stockholm. Um, it has been published uh, in 1995. Uh, it's a street magazine, as they call themselves, a monthly street magazine. Uh, it is run through a non-profit company uh, which is owned and operated by its staff. Uh, so any profit uh, that uh, the publication makes goes back to, uh, to the business uh, in supporting uh, more homeless and socially uh, challenged. Um, the revenues come from sales mostly but also subscriptions, donations, advertising and sponsorship of different social activities. Um, they sell around uh, 33,000, as you see, uh, magazines per month and up to 150,000 people read it. Uh, their mission, according to the magazine, is to support homeless and socially vulnerable uh, people to find their way back to the community through what the uh, magazine calls constructive employment, but also through other means of support. I will go through them. Uh, as I said, uh, they are sold uh, by a network, a group of vendors, which are homeless and socially challenged. Uh, currently, they have uh, more than 300 uh, vendors, 20% uh, of, of whom are women. Uh, the model often uh, in these types of, of, uh, of papers works uh, through the, the model of the vendors buying the magazine or the paper, etc., half of its, of its price and actually have 50% of the profit. So in this case, in Shechum Stockholm, they buy the vendors themselves at 25 uh, crowns and sell it for 50 crowns. 
Uh, it is sold uh, in uh, several main cities uh, in stock uh, in uh, sorry in uh, Sweden, as you see. Um, in order to fulfill their their main mission, which is to empower uh, homeless and socially uh, challenged. Uh, uh, they offer employment, as I said, but also job training to these groups. They offer also legal counseling and assistance in the conduct with, uh, with authorities, which is really important. Uh, we can, I think each one of us can um, think about the challenge that we have when we try to get in contact with authorities. So you can imagine how difficult or sometimes impossible it is for uh, these groups of people. Which up to a certain degree, have either uh, lost or have given up their, even the, their citizen rights. Um, they also uh, help uh, these groups of people to develop or Im improve further a, a set of skills, uh, like uh, computer skills, so they have workshops on computers, uh, but also uh, they offer writing workshops. Uh, they offer them access to different communication means of the telephone, computers, uh, to have their email accounts, but also space to feel comfortable to go and socialize often with peers. Uh, regarding their content, uh, is uh, about uh, stories about uh, people, events, and culture in Stockholm mostly from what they call a street perspective. They have a lot of, of issues, a, a lot of stories about issues, topics of homelessness and social exclu exclusion, uh, stories that have a community angle, uh, stories about uh, substance abuse uh, and psychiatric care, the housing policy, um, and uh, they have been um, um, uh, won, they have won several awards uh, uh, for their work on these issues. Um, they also have stories about the vendors uh, and their lives, written by professional journalists, but also, as I said, often in these types of publications, uh, the vendors uh, contribute themselves, having so their voices heard. Uh, and, and in situation in Stockholm, there is a special se section in the magazine which is called uh, homeless in their own words. Um, so they have, they tell their stories using their own voice. Uh, they also get compensated, so they get some extra money, the people that write and have their stories pub uh, published. Uh, something that is very important, I think, in these cases is that they, um, they learn or they <coughs> remind themselves, to put it differently, to manage and master the language, especially written language, which is really crucial. Something that often we see in these groups of people is that they give up uh, their writing skills. And uh, this, I think, creates a vicious circle in them uh, if they actually want at some point to find a job and uh, reconnect with society. Um, some of them, they're having some publications, some edited books out of this content that actually uh, won some awards. Um, an interesting case is um, Rainy's Diary. Rainy was a, a homeless vendor who would write in the newspaper, I think, for 13 years or even more. Uh, and he published a book afterwards, which was uh, won award. But this was an interesting case to see. Through their attempts to fulfill uh, their main purpose, which is to empower uh, homeless and socially challenged uh, groups, uh, situation in Stockholm actually takes on a broader social role. Uh, and it does that through, uh, in practice, connecting, bringing together different uh, stakeholders, uh, different civil society actors, which actually work as volunteers, supporting the, um, uh, the, the homeless, uh, I mentioned the, the legal advice that uh, they get for free. This is done by uh, students, by law students, that they're doing the internship and they offer uh, free help uh, and, and advice, legal advice to, to the vendors. Uh, but they also uh, actually stimulate a sensitized society uh, on issues of homelessness and social exclusion, uh, taking up 
uh, and education are role. They often give lectures to companies, organizations, and schools, uh, and they actually have prepared uh, educational material for schools about homelessness and social exclusion from more inclusive perspectives. So they do try to uh, sensitize society uh, on these matters. I will go quickly uh, 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 on uh, Factum, which is the second case. Uh, some of the findings are similar, so I will go quicker. Um, presenting them, Factum uh, was established in 2001 in Gothenburg. Uh, it, it is run through, as they call it, a charitable fundraising foundation. Again, the model is, is similar. Uh, or money or income is reinvested in the business, trying to help more. Uh, homeless and socially excluded. Other uh, revenue comes from sales mostly, but also subscriptions, donations, advertising, but specific types of advertising. Uh, for example, they don't, have, they don't accept advertising alcohol, tobacco, pornography, or gambling. Well, we can easily understand why. Um, they sell three, uh, sorry, 36 <coughs> approximately copies a month, and they have 145,000 uh, readers. Uh, their main mission, as they define, is, is the empowerment of, ho of homeless and socially excluded people through employment. But according to the magazine, it is more than just offering the job. It is more uh, about, uh, it's more than earning money. It is often for these people finding, again, a purpose in life, taking responsibility, finding routines, and creating a more uh, orderly life. Um, and uh, connecting, uh, reconnecting with society. The same model, uh, the street papers are sold by uh, the vendors. Uh, they buy the, the paper themselves, the papers themselves half price, and they sell it in its final price, so from 30 crowns to 60 crowns. It is sold uh, in a number of Swedish cities. Um, it has approximately 400 to 600 vendors According to the magazine, regarding the profile of the vendors, some have substance abuse problems, others have no income or a low disability pension. Some of the vendors are selling to meet people and break their social isolation. About half are vulnerable EU migrants. About seven out of ten have no permanent residence. Uh, similarly, as with situation in Stockholm, Factum, uh, attempts to fulfill its, its mission, uh, uh, which is offering support uh, to these groups of people uh, through employment and job training, uh, but also legal counseling and assistance in contact with authorities, so the same model, uh, and they offer them uh, the premises to socialize so they can uh, go to Factum's premises and, and, and meet each other, but also some extras like winter clothes. But you can imagine that it is important uh, in the Swedish uh, uh, winter. Uh, because they do sell the, the papers in open spaces, right? Uh, coffee, snacks, haircuts, etc. Uh, regarding the content of Factum, uh, as they say, the magazine is about the whole society from an outsider's perspective. Uh, they have a strong focus on investigative journalism, uh, on issues of housing, uh, of migration services, drug abuse, treatment, uh, policies, uh, the homeless, EU migrants, psychiatric care, etc., etc., and they have uh, also won several awards for their work on uh, their investigative journalism work. Uh, they have, most of their articles are written by professional journalists, and their argument is that they want to offer, to give to the vendors a high quality professional product that is of high journalistic quality and that is easy to sell. So they do have stories also uh, about the vendors and, and their lives. They have, for example, a section after work which describes what the vendors do, but it is also is written by professional journalists. And there are also several, there are contributions by vendors themselves, but to a lesser degree than in, in Stockholm, situation in Stockholm. There is a strong, stronger focus here on, on professional journalists do, doing the writing. Uh, again, we see here in Factum that uh, also uh, 
through their attempts to fulfill their purpose, they do uh, take a broader social role. Uh, again, it's the same model of uh, bringing together different actors of civil society that help us volunteers. Again, we have the law students uh, doing internship and offering legal uh, advice. Uh, they support other activities of the homeless, like the hom homeless football teams. Apparently, uh, football teams have been uh, a, a very important means of socializing around the world for homeless people. They even have a World Cup, and it's well, Factum organized it in 2004, and I think it was a time that they almost went bankrupt. They had huge debt after that. A couple of uh, wishes for further discussion. Uh, I think uh, these are two examples of street papers that uh, function as a special type of alternative media and they do function as spaces of participation and inclusion. As I said, they are uh, strong advocates of social uh, issues of homelessness, poverty and social exclusion. But what is different uh, is that they do take uh, a clear interventionist approach that mo moves beyond um, content production. They s state that their main mission, their uh, purpose is to empower homeless through employment, homeless and socially challenged, uh, to empower them through uh, employment uh, and creation of support networks. Uh, but through that, I think equally important is that they actually promote a culture of active citizenship because they bring together different uh, groups of people, volunteers, collaborators, and civil society members. Um, also, as I have already uh, presented, they do host the voice of the homeless, but we should acknowledge the limitation. This is not done in maximalist participation terms. Uh, it is uh, mostly, the, the papers, first of all, are run by professional journalists, and the contribution of homeless uh, in the content production is either limited, in any case, it's not in equal terms. And also, uh, the homeless uh, and the, the vendors in general are not part of the board, are not, uh, they're not uh, uh, stakeholders, they're, uh, they're not part of the, the paper's ownership. Uh, so these are issues, I think, to consider and investigate further um, and acknowledge. But at the same time, I think the role um, in offering opportunities for employment, uh, for expression, but also for visibility to uh, these groups that actually are among the most, I would say, invisible uh, and voiceless, uh, is worth acknowledging and I think it's worth also studying further from them. Academic perspective. So, thank you.